Okay, we're back in the PGSA lab. First off, we're gonna look at a, an MCA 88 on its own. It's an eight source, eight zone system. And when we look at it, you can see that we've got it totally wired up. It's connected to a switch. The switch is connected to our local area network. We have an MBX Pre coming in as a source. So let's start on the left side and we'll give you some comparisons to an MCA 66. First off, there's the Arnet link. So if we have multiple controllers, we're going to link them together using the Rnet port. There are eight keypad ports, and these keypads are the MDK C6 keypads. These are zone-specific keypads, as opposed to the XTS Plus keypad, which is universal, allows you to control any source for any zone. The XTS Plus is a network device, so it connects to a PoE switch, so it does not connect into a keypad port. You'll see that the MCA88 has six amplified outputs, and these are rated at 80 watts per zone, 40 watts left, 40 watts right, and the rating is also at 8 ohms, which suggests one pair of speakers. Okay, so now we're looking at the bottom tier of the MCA88, and these are our source inputs. Uh, source number one is uh, always designated as the internal Bluetooth source, and uh, that would be used if you had a Bluetooth transceiver connected into this port on the upper right-hand corner. If you do not choose to use the Bluetooth, then source number one can, can be configured as any type of source input. Uh, you'll notice that every, every source uh, has a corresponding buffered output, so it simplifies having to interconnect controllers together. So if you're, if you're going beyond eight zones, uh, then you would typically use an RCA patch cable, and we'll show you that in the next video. Uh, we have eight source inputs, so the uh, source number eight could be configured as a paging input, and that could be a doorbell, it could be a telephone. Adjacent to that are line level outputs. Every zone has a line level output. If you exceed your one pair of speakers per zone and you need multiple pairs of speakers, outdoor zone, uh, games room, etc., then you can go line level out to line level in of a rust sound amplifier, connect your speakers directly to that amplifier. Zones seven and eight are line level out. And if you reference back to our amplified outputs, you'll see that we only amplify zones one through six. So seven and eight are always configured, always set for line level outputs. Sources three, four, and five can be analog audio inputs, so stereo left and right. They can also be configured as coax digital inputs for sources three, four, and five, or in the case that we've chosen here, we're using the optical input and so we're taking an optical output from, from our MBX Pre streamer, bringing it in into the optical port. Programming would configure source number five, which this is, as an optical input rather than a coax input or an analog stereo left and right input. Okay, we're back in the PGSA lab and we're gonna look at a combined uh, MCA88 system, two controllers, and uh, we'll start looking at the far left-hand side and you'll see that we have a patch cable from controller one to controller two, and this passes the metadata information from the first controller to the second controller. To differentiate between the controllers, there is a, and we'll show it to you on the lower one, a controller ID switch, and uh, this is the first controller, so it's set for number one. This is the second controller, so it's set for controller number two. Um, one thing that you'll notice that's, uh, that's different is that we're connected directly into the Ethernet port on controller number one. Controller number two does not have an Ethernet connection. When we're unlocking these systems, because they do come locked down, we would unlock controller number one. We would update the firmware on controller one. 
but on controller two, because it's a slave controller, uh, there is no necessity to unlock it or for that matter to update the firmware. A couple of sources connected into our MCA88. The uh, first controller uh, has this RCA cable, which has not been terminated as yet, and uh, that will be going to a, a CD player. We have an output, buffered looping output, and we have a patch cable going from controller one, source number three, output, to controller number two, source three, input. Our other source is an MBX Pre. And the MBX Pre, we're using the digital output from the, from the MBX Pre. We're bringing it into the digital input on controller number one. We have to pass that audio signal from controller one to controller two. And we do that using an RCA patch cable that takes the output from controller one and brings it to the input on controller number two. When we're looking at this configuration of two MCA88s to go to 16 zones, you cannot combine an MCA66 and an MCA88. They have different operating systems and are not compatible. Okay, so let's uh, continue talking about our CD player that we're connecting into source number three. The, uh, the control of that CD player is done using IR emitters. And so you can see the IR emitter that we have plugged into the port on the back of the uh, MCA88. So that's the only way that you can do that. There's an IR library that's internal to the controller. So you can choose the appropriate CD player, manufacturer, and then the output of the uh, IR would be passed on to either the MDK C6 keypad the XTS Plus touchscreen or the mobile app, whether it's a phone or a tablet. So controlling third-party devices is a relatively simple process. Uh, there's also a series of, uh, of triggers. So you can uh, uh, turn on, turn off uh, different devices that may be connected or as a peripheral to the Rust Sound gear. 